What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. What I want to talk about today is uh, we're going to have a little bit of a discussion about Paldean Tauros Water and why it's a, kind of like an anti-meta threat that's been picking up in usage the past couple of days and why I actually expected to do fairly well at the Sandy... I was going to say San Diego, uh, my friend Ash is in my head, uh, San Diego regionals that are happening this weekend. Uh, but before we get into that, if you guys enjoy this standpoint in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And that's for my comment question of the day, which is, what do you think about Paldean Tauros Water? And do you think there's another Pokemon that's like kind of an anti-meta threat that you expect to do well at uh, San Diego regionals? Let me know. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So what sparked me to make this video was this top cut result from the Nino Pokebrews tour, which is actually um, like the last big tournament that we had uh, before. Well, I guess not the last big one. I think uh, the, the Beanie Brawl happened a couple of days after this and it was fairly large, but this was pretty big, right? 228 participants um, and we see not one, not two, and it's the same team, uh, but three Paldean Tauros Water in top eight. Now, we do have the top 16 result, which also has a Paldean Tauros Fire, uh, but the point is, there's like, basic, well, basically two teams in top eight, because uh, second place and first place were the exact same team. But yeah, I, I, I want to talk about Paldean Tauros Water uh, due to this result, uh, and it almost seems like this is the meta answer that's been almost staring us right in the face that a lot of people overlooked until uh, pretty recently. Uh, but yeah, so let's talk about the stats on this guy. Uh, so Paldean Tauros Water has the exact same stats as the other Paldean Tauros. If we take a look at just Paldean Tauros generally, uh, it has a fire, a water, and a just straight up fighting variant. Uh, and they all have the uh, same abilities. The only real difference between them is the move Raging, well, it's their typing, and the move Raging Bull and a couple of like coverage moves that they get. Raging Bull, however, is the main move that they're going to be using for like their, their attacking move uh, because it is... Uh, a move that takes their typing so if they're like pure fighting then they're going to be having a uh, fighting type raging bull that will destroy screens and is 90 base power and if they're the water variant then their raging bull will be water type or if they're the fire variant it's fire type so yeah uh, the thing with the water variant is that it also likes to run wave crash so it's sort of a toss-up as to what variant you want to run uh but yeah okay so Water Tauros, I'm just going to be referring to it as Tauros from this point forward because it's a little bit more simple. Uh, Tauros is actually a really cool Pokemon. 75 HP, 110 attack, 105 defense, 30 special attack, obviously completely irrelevant, 70 special defense, and 100 speed is actually a really nice stat distribution. Comparing that to the original Tauros, while I do wish it was still faster, um, I do appreciate the redistribution. Obviously, like the special attack went down and... Um, the attack went up right the defense also went up and we lost a little bit of speed and those are like the big differences but uh i think that overall the bulk helps it out quite a bit because it is an intimidate pokemon the other tauros while it did have some decent hp um it wasn't able to soak up hits uh the way you would want a pokemon like it to soak up hits uh, in the pure normal typing while it is pretty decent defensively in the fact that you only have one weakness um it isn't great in the fact that you have no resistances other than like a ghost immunity so Paldean Taurus Water is able to switch in on more hits and <clears throat> it has uh, better stab options. So yeah, uh, that bulk though is quite nice for it uh, because by running an Assault Vest, it makes it actually one of the most reliable Pokemon in the format to switch in and hits uh, to switch in on hits generally. So if we just look at Pokemon that are like common to the format, um, we can see that Paldean Tauros is a decent answer to a lot of them. King Gambit, I think, is the biggest one, but um, Golden Go is also a pretty decent matchup. Hydreigon is a decent matchup. Garchomp is good. Uh, Mousehold, Armorage, Skeldurge, and even Don Dozo. Uh, but getting into the particulars of those things, uh, basically, by having access to uh, stab close combat and being a just generally bulky Pokemon that resists uh, the Iron Heads coming out from King Gambit, uh, this means that Tauros is just able to like smack these things with a close combat. Uh, and if they are running those variants that allow them to take fire moves, which at the beginning of the format, you would occasionally see like Terra Rock. Now we'll see things like Terra Water or whatever. Um, even at that point, Paldean Tauros isn't terribly worried with uh, the King Gambit matchup because like two close combats will typically do it. In fact, let's pop that in the damage calculator right now. Um, let's go with the offensive variant because right now I have the uh, Assault Vest variant here. And we'll talk about Mirror Herb as well, because Mirror Herb, funny enough, is actually like a 
relatively common item on this guy. We just take a look at uh, the Picolytic stats here. You see Mirror Herb is at like 10, 11% usage. Uh, but yeah, uh, Peldeon Taurus Water, let's just go with like the fast Mirror Herb set versus a King Gambit. Obviously, um, King Gambit is going to get one shot by the close combat. But let's say that wants to Terra into, let's go with like a fighting type, sure. Like it Terra's into fighting type. Uh, that close combat is still going to be like a three hit KO. So if it takes any like chip prior to that, uh, you'll probably be fine to two hit KO it and you can eat a hit from this guy. The main issue with that is the fact that King Gambit has Defiant. And that's where the Mirror Herb comes in, right? So Mirror Herb uh, allows Tauros to copy the uh, stat changes that King Gambit would have. So basically what it copies those stat changes when they happen so if you were to switch in on a king gambit and lower its attack stat and then have it uh proc its defiant boost it gets plus two attack which sends it to plus one where your tauros will actually end up with uh the better outcome here because it's going to go up to um plus two so if we pop those guys back into the damage calculator uh we can actually see that uh paldean tauros at plus two uh if it like the worst thing that's going to happen is it's going to take like a plus one sucker punch right and plus one sucker punch never ko's but your plus two close combat is getting closer and closer to koing this thing uh so that's actually really good let's say you're crazy and you're running adamant oh bam now you actually have a chance to one shot it so like i said any amount of chip allows for this thing to deal with like any variant of king gambit uh golden go is a similar situation but i actually think that the assault vest variant does way better into golden go so this is a big reason why the assault vest variant is so nice i actually very much prefer maxing out the bulk before getting into the attack because that 60 attack allows you to do something pretty particular golden go is uh pretty notorious for running a few different terra types but the one that a lot of people are really scared of is obviously choice specs terra steel because of the sheer damage output that being said that if this thing goes for terrestrial choice specs modest make it rain versus a paldean taurus water with the assault vest you're a water type so you're resisting steel moves right that thing's doing like 51 percent uh to you maximum and then from that point on it does even less and less so like let's say they get that minus one after the initial one. Oh, look at that now they're doing 34 percent point is you not only outspeed these guys but you're just able to stay in on them pretty reliably uh, but yeah, if they Terra Steel, what this investment allows you to do is you're able to outspeed them and then go for the close combat into them. So Paldean Tauros is able to basically like, let's say that you have a Paldean Tauros and a Hydreigon on your side of the field and your opponent has like Tailwind plus um, Tailwind plus uh, Choice Specs Golden Go. You can protect your Hydreigon, safely switch out whatever like you had next to it in for the AV Paldean Tauros uh, and then eat the hit and then the next turn uh one shot the uh the terra steel golden go with close combat obviously like this only works if it's terra steel because it's uh otherwise it's a ghost type and it's immune to this move but even outside of that um your raging bull does like 37 to 44 percent so that is pretty decent and if you want to run like terra water uh that actually makes it a two hit ko uh or if you want to run wave crash that's another option wave crash also does make one more thing pretty consistent um and that's going to be the Hydreigon matchup, but we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, the reason I think that the Assault Vest variant is better off running the uh, Raging Bull rather than Wave Crash is the fact that this thing actually does pretty decent into screens teams. Grimmsnarl is actually a pretty decently used Pokemon in this format, even though Dynamax isn't around. And it got a lot more, it definitely got a lot more value out of Dynamax, don't get me wrong, um, because like a Pokemon next to it could eat up hits with the double HP plus the screens. But even in this format, dual screens is super, super good. So being able to hit Grimmsnarl with the Stab Raging Bull, destroying the screens immediately, and then KOing whatever's next to it with your Paldean Tauros is really cool. And having a stronger Brick Break is just a nice tool. Because Brick Break is like, what, 75 base power? No, we're hitting him with a 90 Stab Water move. That is really nice. And it calculates the damage after destroying the screens. So this move basically bypasses the screens immediately. You don't have to factor that at all. But yeah, uh, I think that the Assault Vest variant is definitely going to want to run the um the raging bull basically for that bear or for that reason alone it just makes it much easier to deal with um grim snarl because you're sort of in a support role sort of in a offensive role yeah and i also like running rock to my mind because it does offer you a little bit of speed control uh yes there are a decent amount of pokemon that don't care about the rock tomb like dragapult because of clear body or even some garchomps uh because of clear amulet uh, but that doesn't really like detract from the value of the move uh, especially since you're running Assault Vest, you can't run Protect. But yeah, the next thing that actually uh, Paldean Taurus does really good into is Hydreigon. And this one really surprised me when I saw just how well it can do it uh, do into Hydreigon. But if you're running the Assault Vest variant, 
Draco Meteor off a of Life Orb Hydreigon is doing 84% uh, maximum to you, and you just one shot it with close combat. Now, here's the thing, like you're eating that hit, and then like the next time it's at minus one, and granted like, or not minus one, it's at minus two. So like, let's say that um, you're actually switching in on an already minus two Hydreigon. You're actually taking 42% maximum, meaning that your like Paldean Taurus just sits in on it. Uh, and also Paldean Taurus has 100 base speed where Hydreigon has 98 base speed. So you actually are just able to outspeed this thing with 244 investment. You get to save those eight EVs. Uh, and that will allow you to outspeed it, smack it with the close combat, or if they're running any kind of Terra variant, because if we look at like Hydreigon's usage, we see a couple of Terra types. Terra Steel is super common. Terra Fire is the other super common one. And there are a few like niche ones. I think Terra Poison had a little bit of of a, uh, of a little um, resurgence for a bit, uh, but it's no longer that useful. So the two main ones being Terra Steel and Terra Fire, uh, you're actually able to just annihilate. And that's why I think that maybe you want to run uh, the wave crash versus that thing because if it goes for terra fire um oh wait no your raging bull doesn't never mind you're good never mind you don't you don't even have to invest for that raging bull will do it apparently 102 why did why did i think it didn't do it why did i think it wouldn't do it i don't know you know point never mind you don't need to run wave crash oh wait i'm terra water never mind you do okay yeah so the the raging bull does 76 percent to 90 percent uh, so that's why you might want to actually run the wave crash on more offensive variants because it makes this matchup more consistent. So that is quite good. Uh, Garchomp is actually a really decent matchup right now because while a lot of them are running clear amulet, you're able to eat the Garchomp hits pretty well, right? So like, let's say you're facing clear amulet, sword, dance, Garchomp. Earthquake does 41% to you. Uh, or if they're Terrastal, they're going to be doing like 55% to you. So that isn't that great. But if they are Terrastalized, now you're able to hit them with the Wave Crash. Granted, you do need to invest a little bit more to one-shot them with Wave Crash. Um, like if you're running the max attack variant, uh, then that's going to be a lot easier to do. Or you could even like creep to KO them with Wave Crash. Like that's not a bad number to hit. 196, and then you're still able to run like an Assault Vest variant. You just have much less bulk. Let me actually see if this allows you to still live the, the Draco Meteor from Hydreigon, because that's like the most important thing. Uh, yeah, you still have the Draco Meteor, so you could run like 196 attack. I just prefer having a bulkier guy, in my opinion. So that's decent. Mousehold is the big one for me. Mousehold is definitely the big one for me. Let me uh, reset my EVs here. So um, the thing with Mousehold is that it really, really relies on not getting its attack dropped and it, it definitely benefited from the fact that intimidate um isn't as relevant as it was in previous formats uh because if it was mouse hold stocks would be in the garbage and i think that maybe the rise in paldea uh, tauros could be what just like sort not ends mouse hold but makes it a much rougher pokemon to run so as you can see uh population bomb at minus one because you're getting intimidated by the tauros is doing 85 percent maximum Granted, if they terrastalize, it becomes a roll to KO you. It's a high chance to KO, don't get me wrong. Um, but they might not want to use that at that point. Like, because you have other Pokemon in the back. Like, Pokemon that resist the Population Bomb are now able to come in on it even better because it's intimidated. And you are a fighting type, meaning that you're able to smack them with a close combat and just one-shot them regardless. So that is that is pretty decent. Tailwind support's also good. And I think the last two things that I want to mention as far as things that Paldean Taurus does well into as like an anti-meta Pokemon uh, are going to be Armor Rouge and Skeleturge. Now, Armor Rouge is a little bit rough because it wants to Terra into a Grass type a lot of the time, and it is a Psychic type, so it can like hit you with an Expanding Force. Uh, that being said, if you're running like a bulkier set, you might be able to actually just eat an expanding force off a of non life orb armor rouge. Yeah, so you just like eat non life orb armor rouge, and then you're able to smack it with either a raging bull, or if you're running like the super fast variant, um, if you're running like the straight up offensive one, then or yeah, even just like life orb, like that's a thing. Wave crash just one shots it, uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, and also, Skeledurge is pretty interesting because Skeledurge, while it is a Pokemon that is like super bulky it actually in the taurus matchup gets kind of screwed over by its ability because unaware is like the best ability for this guy uh you ignore all opponent's stat changes but by doing that it actually means that if your taurus gets intimidated like twice it doesn't it doesn't matter it ignores that negative stat change so your wave crash off of like life orb taurus will still ko it and if you're just running like the max attack taurus like the mirror variant, you're still coming pretty close to KOing it. It's a roll to one shot, like even the bulkier variants, as you can see um, with this one that I have. So yeah, 
Uh, I think that Paldean Taurus is pretty decent. Like, just looking at the teams that it was on in that tournament, uh, while this was a little bit of an anti-meta team because we do see, like, Baxcalibur and uh, Salazzle and, like, some cool Trick Room shenanigans, if we look at the more standard team, um, we can see that, well, there's still a Bax Caliber and it is still kind of off meta. Um, we can see that like it fills in this, this little niche while Pokemon like, well, this like team would hard lose to Golden Go. You can see that like this thing doesn't like taking a Golden Go hit. This thing doesn't like taking a Golden Go hit. This thing doesn't like taking a Golden Go hit. He is Golden Go, but he still doesn't like taking a Golden Go hit. Paldean Tauros can just like switch in on it and be like, yeah, bro, I don't care. Boof, boof, close combat on the Terra Steel Golden Go, or even just like wave crash it. Um, being able to like do that sort of thing, lead off with like Meow Scarada, go for knockoff into Wave Crash and just annihilate Golden Go, removing the thing that counters half your team is really nice. And it can definitely fit on to a lot of other team archetypes, like even teams that I've built, right? Like I can see a place where a Paldean Tauros would work pretty well. Uh, just going back to, well, I have built a lot of Dondozo teams, so I have to ignore those. But looking at like a team that I built with my buddies the other day, I do have some teams that have like a water type on them that I, I want to switch out for the Dondozo or, or for the Paldean Tauros. This team where I have like a Bramblegast, it becomes infinitely better if I switch out the Bramblegast for um, the Tauros because it means that I not only have like an Intimidate Pokemon, but also um, it's just like a Pokemon that has water coverage, which isn't that easy to come by if you're not running like a Dondozo in this metagame. So yeah. Um, you would think that maybe talking about a Pokemon that wasn't a water or that wasn't a Don Dozo, but is also a water type would allow me to make a single video where I don't mention my favorite Pokemon, but, uh, I'm, I'm not able to do that. I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Paldean Taurus is certainly a Pokemon that's going to be picking up. Um, and I really expect it to do well at this upcoming regional. Uh, we'll see if I'm right. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, uh, and obviously you lose to certain things. Like I'm, I'm going to put this out there. This video was talking about the positives. Obviously you lose to Meow Scarada. I'm going to like, I'm not going to lie about that. Right. Uh, but there are so many Pokemon that you do well against, uh, that I think it really makes up for it. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.